I'm Ibs, I'm a software developer here on Burp Suit Professional, and today I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown through our brand new feature called Custom Actions in Burp. So, hopefully we've all used Bamblers in Burp already, we know they're really good for doing simple things such as filtering through tables, but they can also be used for more complex things such as powering our match and replace rules. Custom Actions are basically just Bamblers in Repeater. So in Repeater, a simple use case might just be taking something from your request or response and logging it out. And a more complex use case might be taking that request response and issuing a request to an LLM to do some analysis and give you some information back based on that. So without further ado, let's move over to our repeater tab and take a look at it. So for those of you who haven't used it yet, we now have this new custom action sidebar component right down here. When you click on that, you're taken to this new sidebar component. It's worth noting that custom actions integrate really, really well with Bounders so, and your Bounder library. So you can load new ones in from your Bounder library if you like. You can also create new ones from scratch or from a template. And for those of you who are new to Java and Bounders and this whole sort of ecosystem here, we have this add samples button here, which will um, load in a couple of examples written by our research team, which you can take a look at, analyze, see how they're written and get some ideas for the kind of custom actions that you might want to write for yourself. Alternatively, we do have some resources on our website now, which should help you getting started writing Bounders. Um, but for this demo, I think I'm going to start by adding in some of these samples. And let's move this down a little bit. So you can see once you press the Add Samples button, all your custom actions get loaded into the Project Bounders panel above. It's worth noting that all of these bounders that you see here are always saved to your project file. So if I was to shut down my project and reopen it in another instance, but I would still have the same bounders I'm loaded in. Um, obviously, if you're in a temporary project, if you shut down your project and you add bounders in there, you're just not going to have them anymore. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's also worth noting that each of these custom actions have a little asterisk at the end of their name. So this is to signify that all of these bounders here are not saved in my bounder library, or the version that I have inside of here isn't the same as the version I have in my bounder library. It's also worth noting that custom actions are shared across the entirety of your repeater. So each tab that I have here has access to the same custom actions as you can see on the right hand side. And with that, let's get into looking at one of these custom action examples. So I'm going to go for this calculate response metadata down here. So if we edit that, it opens up the editor for us and we can take a look at the code. So we can see this one is going to take our request response is response body as a string, and then it's going to log out the hash code of the response body. So that would be good for seeing at a glance whether or not the response has changed at all. Um, then it also prints out the response body's number of new line characters. So this basically just prints out the number of lines in the response body. Let's take a look at a different one. So let's go for this retry request without cookies. If we edit that, we can see this is going to take in your current request responses request. It's going to reissue that same request, but without the authorization header and without the cookie header. Take the response of that and print out the status code. So that is going to be good for sort of our glance, seeing whether or not a web page requires any sort of authentication. While we're here, it's probably worth um, talking about the editor itself. So for custom actions, we give you access to the HTTP request response and the request response selection, both of which will come from your repeat tab when you actually run your custom action. We also give you access to the Montori API, the full Montori API. So that means you can access the repeater. You can send issue, you can issue requests to repeater, send requests to organizer, intruder, even access AI if you want to do. And we've also included a convenience AI field, which you can use. So that's basically a shortcut for um, calling API.ai. And as per usual, you have access to logging and utilities like you do in all the other bounders. Then we get to the Bounder editor, which as usual, will give you your code completion and suggestions. And then right at the bottom, we have this tester down here, which is very similar to the one that we introduced into Match Replace about a year ago. So this lets you write your request and response bodies from scratch, you can write whatever you like, and then you can run the test button to see how your custom action would actually run for real when it's triggered from repeater. And then to the left that little test button, you've got this refresh or reset. And what this does is it basically just resets the tester to its initial state. So let's click this now. You see it goes back to blank and blank. Now keep in mind I said to its initial state. So if I was to have opened this editor from a different repeater tab, which had a request and response populated and a target specified, then went to new, create from blank, you can see that this request and response is actually already pre-populated from my repeater tab, which is which is great for starting off. Um, in the same vein, if I was to put some code in here and then press the refresh, it resets it back to that initial state. So it didn't go back to blank. It went back to what I had in my repeater tab when I opened up the editor. All right. So with that, um, I would say I typically recommend starting when you're editing your custom actions, doing it from a populated repeater tab, just so it does pre-populate these two panels down here. And it will also set your HTTP service. So if you were to write a custom action which did need to issue a request, for example, and you didn't have like your target set in your page in, in your repeater tab, you would end up with null points every time you tried to send the request. So since there's no way to really set that 
in the UI tester, I would definitely recommend starting with um, your HP service set. Alternatively, if it makes sense for your custom action, you could do something like just say request response dot uh, request dot with service. And then you could like specify a service manually here, but obviously depending on the use case of your custom action, this may or may not be viable. Okay, so once you're done with the custom action, anything looks good, you can press this okay button down here and you can see it gets added to the project founders um, panel up here. You can then run your custom action by pressing the little play button to the left of it. And any logging which you do as part of your custom action ends up in this output down below. We then also have this auto execute toggle to the right of your custom action. So if you hover over that, you can see it says auto run on send. Just keep in mind, this is maybe a little bit of a misnomer. So this doesn't actually run um, once your request is sent. It actually runs once the response comes back from a repeat request. So just, just keep that in mind. And I'll also note that this is a toggle one per repeater tab. So you see, I can only have one enabled at a time. And if I switch tab, it remembers which one was selected for that particular tab. So this functionality might be useful for, let's say, in the case of this calculate response metadata. But I just wanted to know every time whether or not the response has changed. Um, I could set that to auto execute. And if I send this request, you can see this top number, which was the body's hash code. That's the number we get the first time. If we send it again, we see we get the exact same number, which means, okay, there's nothing that's changed in this response body. Whereas if I was to do the same in this second tab here, I made this one also execute. You see the first time we get this, this number here. And if we run it again, we get a different number. So that's, weird. that's an indication that something's changed in the response body. And I know in this particular instance, that's because this page has a CSRF token, which changes every single time you issue a request to it. All right, so the other thing we've done for custom actions is we've added a new hotkey for it. So if you go into the settings and you search for hotkeys, then you can search for last. We have this hotkey for run last use custom action. So if I was to assign this right now, let's try and find a hotkey that I've not assigned yet. We got one, all right, control shift Z, let's apply that. So now anywhere inside of my repeater tab, I can fire up that hotkey and we'll see it runs that custom action. And it's always the last one that you ran. So if I was to now switch it to this untitled eight again, Actually, no, let's go for something a bit more interesting. Let's go for former burst DNS lookup. So I've just run that. If I fire off my hotkey, you see it's done the same one. But keep in mind, um, the last run ex the last run custom action also takes into account whether or not something has been auto executed on send. So if I was to send this first and then fire off my hotkey, you see we're now getting back to response metadata being triggered. All right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for custom actions at this point in time. I hope you enjoyed the talk. If you guys have any custom actions you've worked on, which you want to share with us, we would love to see them. So please submit them to our, um, our GitHub for that. That'll be a link to that in the description. But that's all for me from now. Um, till next time.